Hello, I'm Gene Ovenek. I'm here with uh, Hoofcare today, and we're going to revisit and expand a little on the uh, leverage reduction portion of our video. And I think it's important to go back and take another look at the structures that are involved in the horse's foot that are being affected by leverage. And uh, what I'm going to explain a little bit about is the, the fact that the foot is designed to accept a lot of force as long as the horse is going in a forward plane. And if you look at the joints in the lower pastern particularly, you'll see that they're primarily hinge joints. They're designed to bend one direction. The coffin joint has some lateral capabilities, and I'll talk about that later. But if you look at the attaching tissue that connects this coffin joint together, you'll see that these structures are of good size, and Mother Nature built that into the, uh, into the limb just because the stresses are likely to be greater. As we look at the navicular bone, the deep flexor tendon, and uh, some of the ligaments in the back of the pastern, they all come to a tension at the time of breakover that uh, actually wears the front of the foot out. And the foot is designed to wear back to a certain position relative to the coffin bone uh, in an optimal form so that the stress to these ligaments and tendons is held to a minimum. When you increase those forces, you increase the potential for harm. And so these, all of these structures that have a good size to them are designed around that concept. Now, if you increase that leverage uh, by a margin of, let's say, three quarters of an inch, the science that's behind this shows that that's increasing the stress and the strain to that joint at the point of breakover as much as 30% and possibly more. The thing that is even more uh, demanding on, on the structures, particularly the coffin joint, the navicular bone specifically, is that when you increase it, let's say an inch or an inch and a half, which is not uncommon, uh, the strain is monumental. So it's easy to see how the navicular bone can, and the navicular area can be affected by this increased leverage. So we know now that through MRIs and conventional uh, scientific approach to looking at lameness, we know that the soft tissue around the navicular bone is in harm's way strictly because of the extra leverage. That being said, we now find our activities, our disciplines in the horses that we uh, are involved with today do lateral movements. So we have to consider the structures around the coffin joint, specifically when you ask horses to turn corners because the joints in the lower limb are not designed to take the kind of forces that we're asking the horse to do this day and age. And so when you take a horse that's turning a corner and you look at the forces that are incurred on the joints at that point in time, it's easy to see then how a lot of things like collateral ligament lesions and stuff like that uh, occur. So I think it's a wise approach as we've taken to look at the things that are being challenged today, the structures that are being challenged and take an effort to minimize the lateral leverages that are creating these problems. Not any different than the footwear that you and I wear and the developments that have been brought forward in our own footwear to help, become, help us to become better athletes because we're reducing the strain in movement, improving our ability to perform. We have to take that same approach with the horses that we are serving today as hoof care practitioners or professionals. So where do we need to go with our technology? We've looked at the barefoot and we see that the edges are worn in close to the edge of the sole. I think that's a good idea. We know that how important reduction, reducing the perimeter of the foot is to the athlete that has to perform in a circle. The PLR has given us a step forward in being able to understand how beneficial that is. 
Even the bare foot doesn't provide the amount of leverage reduction that is suitable for most of the activities of the horses that we see uh, performing today. Thoroughbred has taken a concerted effort to look at these problems in depth, design footwear, horseshoes for horses that will reduce this leverage, and the performance and soundness of horses has been the benefit of that uh, as a result of their efforts. So one of the shoes that, that has become very popular recently is the PLR, which is called the Performance Leverage Reducing Shoe, and the PLR Race. Now, another thing that is on the forefront of uh, taking a closer and keener look at what needs to be done with horseshoes is to allow that shoe to wear itself where it needs to. And these two sh shoes do that. And I think in the future we're going to see more of that type of approach to the, the foot. We've made special modifications to this PLR in cases of treating lameness that give us an insight into looking deeper into the future of what horses really and truly need. We've always looked at the foot as needing to have a very big foot. We've, we now know that that's not a good idea, particularly with the things that we do with our horses. So I think it's hard to know exactly where we're going to go. I think Thoroughbred has given us a, an insight into seeing that picture more clearly as they've provided us with the PLR, the PLR race and uh, simply not putting a wear plate into the shoe allows the foot to get to the point where it's really helping our, our modern day athletes. And I think that as we look uh, at what's, uh, what's in front of us as far as technology is concerned, I think it's gonna, it's gonna be a smaller foundation and, uh, and I think that's gonna benefit the horses that we serve. Mm -hmm.